So in uh, Noble Gas Envy, we are going to figure out why uh, atoms bond in the way they do and why they react the way they react. Um, and it's all based on becoming more stable. So that's why it's hard to sit in a flagpole, right? Anyway, very unstable. Where are you stable? You're stable on the ground after you fall off that flagpole. Hopefully you, you, you didn't injure yourself. But it's all because of stability. So when I say, when atoms can't want, like atoms just do what they do. So a lot of times in the past you guys have heard things like, oh, they want to do this. They want to have this many electrons. They don't want. They, they are more stable. Okay, so it's normally in terms of stability. Okay, so just to clear that up. We should be able to explain why noble gases are stable. We should understand why that they are some of the last elements to be discovered. We should be able to predict how many electrons are gained or lost to form an ion. And predict the charge of the main group elements. So those are our objectives. For so <clears throat> you guys don't have to take this down, but... Uh, noble gases were first discovered in 1868 on the sun. I think I mentioned this before. Helium was found by the light it gave off. They took a look at the light, they separated, and they got this light spectrum that was unique. And they decided that was helium. Anyone remember why? The Greek god of the sun was Helios, the Greek god of the sun. That's why they got the name helium. It wasn't discovered on Earth until 1908 because it was so stable. It didn't react with anything, so we didn't even know it was here. Things were discovered based on the reactivity. That's why the noble gases took so long to be discovered. Um, uh, I think I showed you a slide before about the periodic table. Now, let's take a look at the outer ring of the noble gases. Just take a look at this. I'll post this after class so you guys can take a look at it more. Look at the outer ring. With the exception of helium, all the noble gases, neon, argon, and krypton, they all have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight valence electrons, which we talked about yesterday. Same thing with argon, eight valence electrons. Neon, eight valence electrons. Helium is the exception. It only needs a duet at that first energy level. In that first period, there's only two electrons that you can hold. So, and that ends up being why those uh, hydrogen and helium are grouped the way they are. So, they all have that full valence shell, which is incredibly stable. Other atoms, they want to be noble. Atoms gain stability by being like the noble gases. Uh, the reason why they call them noble gases is because, I'll go back for a second, is because the nobles of the old times, they wouldn't associate with the common people. They would just ignore them. They would just go, go about their business as if the common folk weren't there. That's why they're called noble gases. That's what I mean by they're not interactive, or reactive. So, atoms... Take a look at these. This here is argon. Argon is atomic number 18. So it has 18 electrons. How many of those are valence electrons? And how many are quark? Think about that for a sec. Argon has 8 valence electrons. How many are core electrons? 10. 18 total, 8 valence, 10 core. And you can count them out if you want. Chlorine has 17 electrons, or 7 valence electrons. So, potassium has one valence electron. So, take a look at how argon compares to this. Argon compares to chlorine. What has to happen to argon, uh, chlorine, to be like argon? Anyone see? What, uh, what has to happen, Vinny? What's missing here? An electron. So, chlorine is one electron from being noble like argon. 
So what do you think chlorine wants to do? Chlorine wants to gain an electron. It wants. It's more stable. Potassium, look at that. Potassium has one extra electron from argon. So, what can potassium do with that extra electron? What do you think? What do you think, guys? Give it to him. Just going to give it away. Give it to chlorine. I love it, guys. That's why we have potassium chloride. Oops. Uh, that's okay. So, potassium has one valence electron, 19 total. Argon has eight, 18 total. So, to be noble... It needs one less electron to have that complete set of eight. That's why potassium forms a positively charged ion. It needs one less electron for that complete set of eight. Then it loses it. So it forms K+. Plus. Potassium element, the atom potassium, is a neutral atom. It has the same protons as electrons. When it loses that electron, it has more protons, so it ends up having a positive charge. It ends up having one more proton, so it has a positive one charge. Now, remember, guys, the charge is the superscript on the right of the symbol. And if there's just a plus, it's always assumed to be a plus one charge. And if, if there's no number... So assume one. We're going to be doing a lot of one assumptions. Adding electrons, chlorine has seven valence electrons, 17 total. Argon has eight valence electrons, 18 total. So to be noble, chlorine needs one more electron to have that complete octet. That's why we have chlorine forming a negative charge. It gains one electron to be stable. That's why you have the Cl negative ion is chloride. It's a negative one charge. So ions are atoms with a charge. What a charge means is you have a different number of protons and electrons. If it's not the same, you're going to be charged. Remember, uh, protons have a positive charge. Electrons have a negative charge. If you have more protons than electrons, you're called a cation. If you have more electrons and protons, there's a negative charge. But it's called anions. Now, would it be possible for an, L, an atom to gain a proton? No. No. That, only ha that, that would be a change in the element. This is not nuclear chemistry here, like we talked about before. This is regular chemistry and a regular chemical reaction. We form ions by gaining and losing electrons, like we just talked about. So charge is just the difference between protons and electrons. Charge is number of protons minus number of electrons. Kind of think about this as like money that you have versus money that you spend. If you have $19 and then you spend 18 how much money do you have? A dollar left. You have plus one dollar. If you have $17 and then you spend $18... What do you have? Negative one dollars. So it's kind of like chargers. Whereas your protons are your uh, credits and your electrons are your debits. Okay. Another way of thinking of this, guys, is if you have a positive one charge, you have one more proton than electron. If you have a negative charge, negative one charge, you have one more electron than proton. Okay. And it fits with this. If you have equal protons and electrons, what's true about that? What's your charge? 
Zero. I'm a neutral atom. Very good. Uh, we'll just, I want to move on with our activity. Don't do this. We'll do this maybe later for warm up. Um, but let's talk about why sodium chloride forms. Sodium has one extra valence electron. Look up here. Everybody look up here. Chlorine needs one more, uh, one more electron to have eight. So what happens is sodium do is an electron donor. It gives an electron to chloride. So you have Na plus and Cl minus. And that's why sodium chloride forms in the ratio it does. For every one sodium, you have one chloride. Other atoms want to be noble, too. So, like, oh, you know, I think I misplaced this slide. So, we'll move on. So, like, sodium fluoride, similar thing. Sodium has one valence, fluoride, fluorine has seven. So, sodium loses that one electron, becoming NaF. And, um, did I, is that two of the same thing? Oh, well. So, then you ha you're left with uh, sodium positive charge. Fluoride negative charge. Um, the main group element charges. And if you guys take out your periodic tables for a second. So if you look at the A group elements, these are the main groups. These guys all form a positive one charge because they lose one electron. They have that one valence electron. These guys form a positive two charge, the alkali earth metals, because they have two valence electrons, so they form positive two charges. Like, similar to that, group three has a positive charge of three. Four actually can be a charge of plus or minus four because they can lose four electrons to be noble or they can gain four electrons to be noble. Uh, your nonmetals tend to lose, gain electrons, so these guys form a, a group of negative three. Uh, the chalcogens form a negative two charge because they gain two electrons. And the halogens gain one electron, so they have a charge of negative one. And the noble gases, well, they're just noble. You can figure it out by how much you have to gain or lose by the number. That's So, like, fluorine is one off of sodium, so it has to gain one electron to be, like, um, neon. Oxygen's number eight. It has to gain two electrons to be neon, to be like neon. Nitrogen is seven. It has to gain three. Now, boron could gain five, but it's also easier to lose two. So that's why these guys form positive charges. All right? So 